podcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hi, traders. Welcome to the live webinar with Admiral Markets. My name is Chris, and uh, we'll be focusing again on uh, candlesticks and basically price action in general and how they can help with uh, identifying breakouts, failed breakouts, bounces, slash reversals, etc. Uh, before we dive into uh, the charts, please be aware of these two disclaimers. First of all, the first disc disclaimer uh, explains the fact that this webinar is shown to a global audience, but may not be suitable for everyone. Please visit AdventMarketsGlobal.com, select your country of residence, and contact an appropriate entity. Second of all, the second disclaimer uh, is stating that trading for exchange and global financial markets is considered high risk. Please seek the advice of an independent financial advisor for more information on that. This webinar is for informational and educational purposes only. By continuing watching this webinar, you agree with this disclaimer and you are aware of the, aware of the risk involved when trading. All right, so thank you for your attention on those two disclaimers. And uh, good to see everyone, good to see you, uh, Aruk Sandai and Angel, and doing pretty well. I had um, a couple of good trades after a small drawdown, so happy that uh, we got a, a bounce back up. Um, but uh, market now, I think, is a little bit volatile. It's, um, you know, it's, it's not a good spot for some swing trades maybe for some intraday trading still it's, it could be okay uh, i think they're kind of like stuck in um stuck a little bit in uh in, in, a, in a tough spot we'll take a look at the charts though in just a second first wanted to dive in the website just very quickly idolmarkets.com where you can find out first of all if you're looking later on at the recording uh, you can see more webinars by going to uh, the website and then clicking on education and signing up for live Forex and CVD webinars right here. You can also sign up for courses. Those are recordings and uh, all different types. Basic one uh, is Forex 101. Then the next step could be zero to hero. After that, you might want to check out Masters of Trading. Uh, there are also, of course, a lot of an analysis on a daily basis with some interesting tools as well. You can find here market heat map and, and sentiment. And with regard to tools, there's also an extra feature called Supreme Edition that you add to your MetaTrader, which you can download for free, MetaTrader Supreme Edition. That's also could be very interesting. We'll show you some of the uh, features in, in the live webinar today, including Keltner and Pivot Points are my favorite. Uh, if you join the webinar regularly, you know that. So. That was just a quick introduction. Of course, with Admiral Markets, you can start trading to all different types of uh, instruments, as you can see here. With that said, uh, let's move on and take a look at live charts. Let's take a look at uh, how price action and candlesticks can help us uh, make better trading decisions as uh, with regard to entries, but also the management and hence exit. So I'm going to grab my... Uh, MetaTrader platform. All right, I'm just uh, switching profiles at this moment and it'll be ready in a, in a couple of seconds. Is there anything, uh, I'll just use the opportunity to ask you if uh, there's any particular trade idea that you think is interesting, up, down, currency pair, time frame. We're kind of interested in, uh, in, uh, in your view. I, I personally not really enticed at the moment. I was interested in your dollar upside, but it actually I was waiting for follow through and it didn't happen. So what I was waiting for for your dollar was basically a breakout to the upside. And we never got that bullish breakout. So I was looking for a candlestick that could basically break below above the weekly pivot point above this channel like this bullish small wick something like this right that would have been a confirmation of the breakout in my view and that would have been a, a signal for me to uh to go long maybe immediately otherwise I, I might have checked the lower time frame see if there's any retracement possible or likely i should say and uh that would be a setup that i was thinking about 
for upside today. But we didn't get it. So, and we actually got a bounce. So in this case, when you look at breaks and bounces, uh, you know, sometimes when you analyze the charts, you are interested in either a break or a bounce. In, in this particular case, I was only interested in a bullish break, not a bearish bounce. And the reason was that for, from my perspective, uh, there was a good chance that this was an ABC from a wave analysis perspective. And price did bounce at this previous bottom in the support zone that I had on the chart. So, you know, from my perspective, I thought there was a good chance that this was the start of a new rally correction and, and up it could go. And it didn't do that. So sometimes uh, your analysis gets invalidated. Uh, you know, but that's okay. In this case, it th doesn't really matter that my analysis was um, was invalidated because I, I didn't trade it. So my account doesn't notice the difference, luckily. So th that's good for me at least, right? So um, is, well, I should say when I say invalidated, I should add that it's not necessarily totally invalidated because this could still be that ABC correction that I expect. It is just that price is apparently correcting lower and it is not, you know, moving up as quickly as I thought it could, if you see what I mean. It could still be that this is an ABC and, and therefore the next purple zone right around here with the long to moving average, the S2 around 122.50 could still be a zone where price bounces. And uh, it is, an area where I would be interested in looking for bullish candlestick patterns as an indication that price is indeed reversing in that area. So candlestick patterns like a pin bar, a bullish pin bar, a uh, um, engulfing twin, you know, anything that's bullish with, with, with uh, the euro dollar on the four hour chart. Uh, so, and of course, if price does bounce like this, then later on, there could still be this breakout, probably from the S1 to the weekly pivot point, as you can see here, right? So this is resistance. If price moves down, bounces, hits the S1, makes the bull flag, and then it starts to break, it could still be this breakout trade up in here between S1 and weekly pivot point, but that will take some time. That will happen maybe, maybe later. We're not sure if it happened, but maybe not. I was hoping it would happen today. That was the trade I was looking for from a swing perspective. It, it didn't materialize. And otherwise, I don't see anything from a swing perspective to, further. But we will analyze the charts and see. Maybe that has changed in the meantime. If you are looking for a bounce, right? If, you, if your analysis says that this is a likely bouncing spot, this, this trend line, then this one hour candle could have been maybe interesting, right? Or if not this bearish candle, then maybe the break of this support trend line with this candle, right? So if your view is bearish, then those could be trigger candles that could spark your interest for a potential trade to the downside. Not that I, I didn't trade it because I was not interested. My analysis uh, ignored that downside trade, I, I thought it was not that interesting. So, but, you know, if you were, then th that those are, I'm just trying to give examples of, you know, price action and candlesticks that could be used in this particular case for, for downside. Alrighty, so let's move on to some other examples. Uh, Angel was talking about some uh, instruments. I can take a look at gold and uh, uh, the others. I will, you know, send you probably in an email. All right, but we can take a look at gold and Eurocad, Nasdaq. Okay, Nasdaq, Eurocad, gold. 
Let's see. Hero cat. Well, yeah, I'm not a major fan of Eurocat itself, personally. Just drawing some levels that seem to be important. And uh, we are in a uptrend, obviously. We had a break of this resistance. This was a uh, rising wedge. And that rising wedge did break to the upside. Alrighty. One second, let me correct that. All right, there we go. So uh, now, whether this is a, basically the end of this upside because it did hit a resistance level still because there's so much so much resistance. Or is this uh, a pullback within the upside? I think it's really difficult to tell, to be honest. There's divergence between these tops, and there's a strong resistance level here. So the price is moving lower is not surprising, probably. I guess it's, the question is, what, what will price do in this zone? Uh, is probably the main concern at this moment. Pretty bearish candle yesterday. I don't see anything that particularly interesting. It, it's, I think, characteristic of uh, today's market in Forex, at least, is that a lot of these pairs are stuck in, uh, in between kind of transition zones. So it's, it is, uptrend but then again there are a lot of signs that price is running into struggle then again if you were looking for downside you know this break could have been better rather than maybe here right now so it doesn't seem to be in a good spot if you're looking for upside you know support is lower if you're looking for downside price has already moved against the trend for a while so I don't see any particular uh, setup here, but that's also something that is kind of a characteristic of other pairs. It seems to be in a, in a difficult spot at this moment. But looking into the future, I would say that uh, what could be interesting is if price gets into the zone right here, there could be a bounce perhaps. And uh, if it does bounce, for instance, like this, Right, there could be, it depends how price moves up. If there's a ABC, there could be another weakness here for downside. So it could basically stay sideways like this. I don't really have anything else that would make sense to discuss, to be honest. We can put a fib from here to here. And typically, if this is an ABC zigzag, minus 61.8, fib is a typical target. All right, so price could hit this target, make a sideways move, and then continue towards this or the minus 100 target, and both could be bouncing spots. Now, let's see what Alexander is saying that uh, there could be, he's thinking it could be the beginning of a bearish trend. And on daily chart, there are two spike candles. Let's take a look at that. Yeah, yesterday was bearish. It could be the start of a, of a downtrend. We did see 
that Price was making a potential right shoulder. This being maybe the left one. Let's see how many days they were in between. 96. About 104. So, yeah, it's about the same same time. So it is possible that it, it could be the start. But it is a quite a, a, a long-term kind of picture. So that's always a little bit difficult to estimate the exact turning spot of such a big move. So it is possible. It's just it is it is would be it's not that practical for us to trade on lower time frames, I think. But if this is the turning spot, then yes, we should expect uh, more momentum to the downside than uh, you know than one fifty two fifty. In that case, we should probably see price head towards minus 100 at least, make a bear flag and continue like that. Let me use my other template. This could be a breakout candle that breaks through this fractal. So if there's a close, would be, sorry, below the low, below this low, it could be uh, okay to look on a 50 minute chart. And uh, wait for a little bit of a, a flag here like this and a break of that flag. If this is a wave three or C, that could make sense to me. That's probably the only way I could imagine trading it because we, at this moment, don't know if this is a wave C or a uh, uh, a wave three to the downside. And if it is a wave C, then it doesn't have much left. It has a little bit left. So from that point of view, waiting for a little bit of retracement and trying to catch that next move could, could make sense. Not a big retracement. Probably a retracement to the short-term moving average isn't enough. And then a turn. That turn could be traded if price basically, if we make a, a flag like this, five to six candles not breaking this high could be already uh, you know a way of trading it the stop loss though would have to definitely be at least above this high at the very minimum so that uh, the trade is not in in harm's way all right pound dollar is uh, a bit stuck it is it bounced off the fib and we were saying yesterday that it could make this rally and I said that if it makes the rally, we're looking for kind of a, a retracement and pull back to the upside. So now it's kind of stuck in between that. It did break. It made the hook back. It did bounce. It made another hook back. So if this is, you know, is this a, uh, which hook back is it? A hook back for upside or downside? I think that uh, if I look at the bigger picture analysis, then I would expect upside, but You never know with this pound. It really depends on the long-term direction. And that's it is difficult to estimate at this point. Once again, it seems to be stuck in a, in, in, in a hard, difficult spot. So from this point of view, it could be better to wait for a breakout candle to the upside. That could, a good sturdy four-hour candle that could probably break above the S1 would be a good sign that price is moving up. Downside, I would probably need to see a bearish candle close or at least the low break through the previous low at S2 right here. So in between these levels, price is a little bit uh, difficult at this moment. 
And uh, yeah, this could break both ways, I think. Still, I think the upside is a little bit more favorite. But at the moment, various pressure is there. So we have to see if, uh, if price fails to break this bottom, then that breakout to the upside seems more likely. So difficult spots at this moment. Dollar yen two upside correction upside correction. What is a correction of what? Right, because it's it's really uh, a difficult spot. We have price trending down, but ultimately bouncing off support, then making a hook back, then bouncing again. Very much retesting a lot of levels here. Aussie two. It fell a lot, but could it make a retracement before? Making it maybe a bigger ABC, for instance, like this. So many of these pairs are kind of in that vibe. You're in New Zealand, in this channel, right at support, right? It made a, a down move back to the bottom of the channel, then made a bounce. Is this a hook back? I would probably think so. This, there's, a, there's a decent chance that this is a hook back. But ultimately... It is, there's not a ton of, of bullish momentum at this moment, is there? Because price is making pretty strong downsides. So, you know, this is ultimately, you know, a little bit of a reversal trade if you're looking for upside. So, from this point of view, a bounce, well, maybe if we get a bullish candle here, for instance, another bullish candle, we would have five bullish candles in a row, not breaking this high, uh, low. Sorry, that would also increase the chance of a push up or break above these purple lines like this, right? Also increase the chance of a bullish breakout within this channel to the upside. All right, so. For the moment, I'm waiting for more info. Will it break to the downside or, or will it break the upside? This spot, it will probably bounce, but it's not a type of trade that I'm really that much into unless I see clear kind of reaction here with time pattern maybe. But it's a, it's a decision zone, it's a triangle pattern and it's not very clear at this moment, what the breakout will be. So I don't think it's worth trading either way, personally, at this moment, at least. And so, and so forth, and so forth, so, et cetera, et cetera. So this is kind of characteristic for the market at this moment. I think that, uh, yeah, more info is needed, really, to give us an idea about uh, the next step. All right, so let me think for a second, which maybe take a quick look at this pound odd. I don't want to be too repetitive. They all seem to have the same kind of, in a way, same structure. The pound odd is moving as if it's in a, in a bull flag chart pattern. But I wouldn't be surprised for the moment if price there we go. If price makes one more dip lower like this, then bounces again, challenges this resistance, and next time maybe breaks. About 175.75, right? Could be the bottom of this, this, this channel. 
one more push lower and wouldn't be surprised. And then the next break could be good for this pound out. So I think it's setting itself up. It could set itself up for, for one more push higher. Ultimately, though, if it breaks through 175.75 uh, and uh, then it could actually go a little bit deeper, maybe to retest 175, which is this trend line and moving average. If it breaks through that, then there could be a bearish breakout. So long term, 175, very important. At this moment, 175, 175, 75, important support levels. And 177.50, important for break to the upside. So this is how I would read the pound on. And not exactly very interesting to trade at uh, this particular moment, I think. Alrighty, uh, let's take a look at some others like gold, for instance. Gold uh, had a uh, another day that broke yesterday, break, pull back, and continue. So we can see this is the breakout candle. It's a good example of a candlestick that had a close near the low, where we had a significant volatility or a decent volatility in that candle, meaning that the high and the low were uh, far away or enough away from each other to count as a decent sized candle. So, and, and the break obviously clearly below the trend line. So that was a good breakout candle, I think. And uh, we had a retracement of that candle about halfway. We can put a fib on that candle and you can see that price almost hit the 50 fib or yeah, basically I guess did hit the 50 fib. Well, very small difference. And on the lower time frame, that was like this, this kind of break, pull back, and now continuing. So on the hourly chart, this, this pin bar could have been maybe a signal for this candle as a signal that price is breaking below this support. All right, so we had a bounce here, and we had a break here on this hourly chart based on also the breakout that we saw on the daily chart right so we see a breakout on the daily chart and on the hourly chart we see after the breakout we see a bounce and breakout so this is how you can tie time frames together and uh, just quickly checking what angel had in mind as a target 1280. I have uh, 1300 and 1260 ish, I guess, in mind. 1280 is a little bit in between, but yes, generally, indeed, I think it could move down like this. And then there's another zone here, and there's another zone here, potentially. If it will go that deep, I don't know. But I'm still holding on to this A, B, C analysis. I don't know if that will work out, if that's really uh, the, the, the wave pattern that's correct. But for the moment, it still seems the most likely, to me at least. So for the moment, I remain bearish with that in mind. But of course, it could be with ups and downs. Once again, like if it falls here and then moves up, falls up, falls up, and then you know something like that it doesn't have to be. Certainly, doesn't have to be something that moves smoothly to the downside. Alrighty. Let's take a look at uh, some of these stock indices. Dow Jones is moving higher. I did 
indicate that, you know, from my point of view, a after the rally, kind of like a recovery rally or a cat bounce rally, maybe cat bounce is not the correct word, but, uh, you know, after a, 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 a bounce, because obviously it fell a lot, but it fell a lot. And uh, a bounce that did seem likely. I thought that a correction lower was probably the most likely. Now I'm not sure about that because it, you know, these these particular instruments move a little bit different than forex, and these dips sometimes just uh, provide opportunity to to buy in, and, and then there's not really any deeper correction. Um, traders and investors step in, and it just keeps pushing up, and. Uh, so therefore, in forex, it would be more likely that this zigzag would occur with stock market, stock index indices. Uh, it is it is less certain, I think, and uh, it remains to be seen. I think that price action is, is certainly very important here because for the moment it's very bullish. So before I would consider it likely that price turns here and makes one more correction to the downside, I would definitely need to see some. Bearish candlestick patterns, it, it could uh, not happen, right? We already recovered halfway of this fall. Ultimately, I, I'm leaning towards a bigger correction, but it is very difficult to uh, estimate whether that indeed will happen. This was a big fall. Will there be resistance here and how much and how far? Really difficult question. Uh, and I think that, you know, saying that this must correct deeper is probably too, too soon at this moment. Uh, it, uh, it certainly could be a dip with an overall downtrend. It was a fast, deep dip. That's true. But, you know, we, we can't rule it out. And uh, eventually, I, I do think that the market will make an even bigger correction than 5%. But whether that is right here, right now, that's a million-dollar question, I guess. It's very difficult. And I would say it's, I'm leaning towards maybe 50-50 at this moment, and that's pretty generous towards a bearish correction, I would say. It is a, it's a very... Timing is the most difficult. One of the reasons why I like trading... Um, Forex, gold, CFDs, probably uh, a little bit more. But uh, yeah, if you like stock indices, though, it, uh, in my view, keep an eye on basically this resistance zone right here. How price responds there, and if it does show anything bearish, then keep an eye on how price responds to the 61.8 fib of this upside. A bounce there and price might make it higher whereas if we break like this then there could be a good continue there could be a potential continuation nasdaq is probably similar A fast correction, but not necessarily very deep, right? If you look at a fib like this, for instance, this is wave three. Still seems likely that uh, actually, if I think about it from this point of view, it is probably more wave three than anything. And we didn't really have a serious wave four. So maybe I'm a bit too bearish. It, it, if this is a wave four, it, you know, wave five is, is more likely, in fact, upside. Still, I'm curious what you think. Let me know if uh, what uh, you know your view. Uh, we start a bubble. Yeah, I think it is moving quite impulsively. I don't think it. Obviously, this is not sustainable for forever. Such a speed. There has to be some correction eventually. Whether that is now i don't know and how you know how much how much bubble i don't know it's really um these are tough questions i think 
you have various factors coming in. The tax cuts in the U.S. could be good for companies and high net worth individuals. Maybe not so good, at least according to some sources, for uh, for uh, middle income in the long run, which could be good for the stock market in the short count, short term, but maybe not so good uh, a bit longer down the line. So, but these are you know very long term forces at play, uh, and the stock market could could still make some higher highs before uh, there is this kind of correction that one would typically expect, whether it's a bubble or not. I think it is a bit at the moment, but these bubbles can can you know, last and per, be persuasive and then keep their momentum for, for longer than uh, our wallets imagine, in a way. Always very tricky with these uh, these bubbles. So I think, yes, there is a, a certain degree of bubble in it. How much? Difficult to say. How long will it last? Difficult to say. Eventually, I think a decent correction will occur. Uh, but if I think about it, this is looking more like still a wave three. And I think that a wave four and five uh, is more likely, actually. Alrighty. Let's see. Let me think if there are any particular pairs that uh, would take a, like take a look at. Do you have any preference? Actually, we didn't take a look at DAX yet. Same thing, really, isn't it? Very sturdy uh, downside. But the buying is also quite aggressive at this moment. So here, too, it will be interesting to see how price responds at resistance. And then if it does bounce, subsequently, how will it act near support? So how will it respond here? And if it does dip, how is it going to respond here, basically? Those are two interesting decision zones where we can keep an eye on price action for more info. Poundcat is making a triangle. With regard to Eurocat, it is, of course, also good to take a look at DollarCat because that will give us some info about the long-term potential of the CAD, Canadian dollar in general. And let's take a look here. Generally, probably indeed slightly bearish. It is, uh, it could break both ways on the other hand. So definitely keep an eye on this trend line. If it breaks above, you know, there's also a bullish breakout potential. This could be an ABC and wave one, two, and up it goes like this. Uh, then again, we are having clearly low lows and lower highs. So this could be definitely a hook back zone for a continuation of the downtrend that we're seeing, because this is still, I think, a downtrend. So that will impact the Eurocat too. If we get a bullish break, the Eurocat will move at least a little bit to the upside too. Other pairs, Yuri-Yen, Pound yen I really don't see anything interesting on those at the moment. It is messy at this point. Maybe on lower time frames. I'm just thinking which which... A particular chart at this moment, but I 
maybe you're in New Zealand. I would keep an eye maybe on this this trend line. How does price respond here? If there's a bounce and a hook back like this and a failure to break this bottom, for instance, that could be a bounce trade on a 50-minute chart within this triangle. Although I prefer the breakout of the triangle, it could be a, one way of trading the triangle. I'm just trying to be a little bit creative in, in lower time frames because the higher time frames are not really set up for, for something interesting, I think. So this could be one approach, right, to, to find a different type of trade. And that could be based on, on the bounce here of this four hour chart. So those are kind of trades that one can think about, I guess, in uh, in times when uh, when the market is maybe not that set up for your for your strategy or analysis. Also, keep an eye on this five hour, this fifth four hour candle would be interesting. If it's bearish like this, then I would not want to trade it to the upside. By the way, because that's that would be a you know wait for this candle maybe an hour and forty five minutes from now, and then. Uh, you know, we would have more info about uh, how this candle looks like. If it's if it's bearish like this, that would not look good, for instance. And that's a, an interesting candlestick slash price action info that would help us maybe uh, avoid trading it to the wrong direction. Uh, otherwise, I guess, you know, if you don't have anything on your wish list to, to review, then I guess we'll wrap it up. If you do, still let me know. We can take a look at that. But I don't see at this moment. I'm I'm literally waiting and, and keeping you know just analyzing the charts for the moment, uh, but not seeing any trade setups in it. today. Most likely not from from my point of view at least. But let me know if you do see anything interesting. I'll take a look at that. Uh, in the meantime, if you're looking for new webinars. AdmiralMarkets.com, click on Education, Forex, and CFD webinars. All right. And uh, you'll see real-time daily trading ideas every morning. You'll see Friday, Nate, no, that's, sorry, that's, no, that's tomorrow. You will see fractals and their appliance in financial markets. And let's see, otherwise we have, of course, new schedule next week. We're looking at FIBS, two-part series, February 20 and 22. All right, and of course, if you're looking for trading with the Admiral Market pivot points that you see, here weekly pivot points but you can change that to daily if you're interested in the mini terminal in the Kelter channel or any of the other extra features that are part of the supreme edition just go to platforms metatrader supreme edition and uh, you can download that of course for mt4 or mt5 all right i guess that will be about it i uh, will keep it then a bit shorter because market is kind of still finding its path, in my view at least. We'll be back tomorrow once again with Fractals. Wish you all great trading. Thanks for joining in any case, and uh, hope to see you soon. Cheers.